Good evening, and tonight I'm going to tell you all about water in the state of Montana. And I'm not talking about fly fishing, I'm not talking about boating on our waters. What I'm talking about is this, drinking water and wastewater. And I hope to answer the following questions that you may have. First, where does water in your homes come from and how is it treated? And second, where does water go when it goes down the drain or when you flush? <laughs> These questions are interrelated, as you'll see. So let's first talk about drinking water sources in the state of Montana. Montana is a headwater state, meaning that some of the largest river systems on the continent originate near the Continental Divide. The Missouri River on the east that flows to the Mississippi River, and the Clark Fork and the Flathead Rivers on the west that flow into the Columbia River. Our drinking water sources in Montana consist of groundwater and surface water. Groundwater is often very high quality and often doesn't need to even be treated before it's delivered to your homes and businesses. Surface water consists of rivers, lakes, and streams. And as you can imagine, surface water is typically dirty and contains many small particles and pathogens such as viruses and giardia that must be treated in order to make it safe for drinking water. This is a photo of the confluence of two rivers in northeastern Montana, the Milk River, guess which one's the milk, and the Missouri River. Many communities in Montana use both these rivers for their drinking water source. So how do we clean these rivers up? Drinking water treatment is a multi-step process, and what we're most concerned about is the small particles that cause a cloudiness in the water, as you see in the glass of water in the photo. If I had that glass of water, and I just dipped it into the Milk River, and I had it right here, and I let it sit for an hour. Some of the heavy particles would settle down to the bottom, but we'd still have a cloudiness to the water. If I let it sit for a day, or even a week, we'd still have cloudiness in the water. The particles are simply too small to settle. So how do we get these particles out of the water and make this water safe to drink? Well, the first step in the treatment process is to use chemistry and also filtration. The photo on the left is a typical laboratory setup that you may find in a drinking water treatment plant where we're trying to find the right chemical makeup. So by adding specific chemicals to water, we can get these very, very small particles to stick together, form larger particles, and then settle out in a tank called a settling basin or a clarifier. However, we still do have very fine particles we need to remove. Filtration using filter media, such as coal or sand, is used to remove the remaining particles. These small particles that are chemically treated become trapped in the small pore spaces of the, the coal and the sand, and thus removed, are removed from the water. Clean water then comes out the bottom of the filter. Depending on the specific contaminants in our source water that we're trying to remove, we may use a different type of filter called a membrane filter. Membranes have really, really small pore spaces, much smaller than what's in between these grains of sand, and thus can remove smaller and smaller particles. However, both types of filters produce excellent water quality. So we're almost done with drinking water treatment. We've used chemistry to remove particles. We've used filtration to remove really small particles. So the final step in drinking water treatment is disinfection. Disinfection is accomplished by adding chlorine to water, either in the gas form, a liquid form that's very similar to your household bleach, so think Clorox, and sometimes in a solid form. Disinfection targets any of the remaining pathogens in the water from the filtration process. Clean, safe water is then pumped into a piping network and delivered to your homes and businesses. All of these drinking water treatment processes are monitored on a consistent basis and regulated by the state of Montana. So now we're going to switch gears from clean water to dirty water. And we're going to talk about wastewater or sewage. And I'd like you to think about sewage, which is probably a question that none of you have ever heard. Am I right? Most of what goes down the drain is water. In fact, 99% of the water, of the wastewater or sewage entering a wastewater treatment plant is pure water. 
It's the other 1% of the material that we're concerned about that we need to treat. In drinking water, we talk about particles and we talk about pathogens. In wastewater, we talk about solids, yucky solids. We also talk about nutrients, nitrogen and phosphorus. As with drinking water, wastewater is a multi-step process, and the first step in the process is screening. These yucky solids and rags and whatever goes down the drain anywhere in a community ends up in the wastewater treatment plant. They must be removed. And so this material is physically screened from the wastewater flow in the first step of the process. In drinking water, we rely on chemistry. In wastewater, we rely heavily on biology. And we like to grow the right population of microbes or bugs that actually do the treatment for us. It's kind of cool. Some of these bugs like oxygen, and so we pump air into aeration basins. Other bugs don't like oxygen. Biological treatment is where nutrient removal happens, where the nitrogen and phosphorus can be removed. Much like drinking water, we have particles or solids that we then need to remove. And so we do that in a settling basin or a clarifier. Sometimes we need a higher level of solids removal. And so communities often use filtration. They'll use a sand filter or even a membrane filter to get a higher degree of solids removal and a cleaner effluent. It's very dependent on the specific water body where the wastewater is discharged. As an example, the community of Big Fork discharges into Flathead Lake, which is one of the most pristine water bodies in all of North America. Big Fork has a membrane on the tail end of its treatment plant to filter solids out and protect the water quality of Flathead Lake. The last step in the wastewater treatment process is discharge. Wastewater is discharged into lakes, rivers, and streams. And as with drinking water, wastewater is regulated by the state of Montana and monitored on a consistent basis. I mentioned previously that drinking water and wastewater were related. And as an example, we'll go back to our state of Montana map. And I've highlighted the Missouri River in blue. Starting at the upstream end of the Missouri, the city of Bozeman treats its wastewater using a process very similar that I talked about here tonight, and they discharge the wastewater into the East Gallatin River. The East Gallatin flows into the Gallatin, the Gallatin flows into the Missouri River. Moving downstream, the city of Helena, for part of the summer, uses the Missouri River as their drinking water. And then they discharge the wastewater back into the Missouri downstream, of course. Moving downstream on the Missouri, the city of Great Falls uses the Missouri River for drinking water. You guessed it. There's a trend here. And they discharge their wastewater back into the Missouri. So this trend continues all the way down the Missouri, all the way to the Mississippi. Now, this concept is not unique to Montana, but we're a headwater state, right? So we have the advantage of being on the upstream end of all these river systems. <laughs> So I hope you learned a little bit about, a little bit more about water and wastewater in Montana and I have an appreciation for the treatment processes that go into making our water safe. Thank you.